Yesterday was a very big day for Bulova and Accutron. Bulova released their 43 millimeter version of the Bulova Lunar Pilot. Very big news from them. We also got the announcement of the new astronaut from Accutron, a historic GMT. Today, I have a sample to show you guys. I'm really excited about it, so let's flip the camera and take a look at the Accutron Astronaut T reissue limited edition. So here it is. This is the Astronaut, a reissue that was actually announced yesterday by Accutron. This is a non-working sample. I'm just going to show you some of the details. However, this does not have a movement inside. The movement inside this watch is the Salita SW330, but everything else is exactly the same as the watch that you would get. So I'll show you some of the details. We'll do some macro footage of it as well, and we'll talk a little bit about the history during the video. So. Obviously, Accutron, Accutron Bulova came out in the 1960s, around 1960, and it featured a tuning fork movement. That was really important because that movement came well before quartz movements, and it could stand up to extreme temperatures and, of course, extreme pressure. And that's the reason why NASA chose it and the CIA. They actually chose this watch for their pilots that would normally operate under extreme conditions. Those pilots, like the pilots of the X-15, where they would be flying at 4,500 miles per hour, 20 miles above the Earth's surface, or pilots of the A-12, the predecessor of the SR-71 Blackbird, because it was one of the fastest jets of all time, inside the cockpit it could get up to 150 degrees and of course there were extreme pressures associated with that and the astronaut was chosen because it could stand up to all of those temperatures and that's why those pilots were issued an astronaut so there's a lot of history behind this watch lots of pilots used it and it was actually used in i think about 46 different nasa space missions and actually made it to the moon during apollo 15. So tons of history behind this watch. A lot of people talk about moon watches and usually when you're talking about a moon watch you don't end up talking about Accutron or Bulova. So this is pretty cool. Now this is a GMT. You have a black and silver bezel, black dial. The hands and the dial are very very similar to that original Accutron Astronaut T. However you have a thicker second hand on here and then of course there is loom in that second hand which the original watch did not have. The dial has applied indices and then you have triangles or darts I guess in between each one of the indices for that GMT. Now the measurements on here are bigger than that original watch. At the bezel you're measuring just about 41 millimeters. However, at the case, it measures at 38 millimeters, which is actually the size of the original watch. Thickness on here is just about 13.7 millimeters. You'd get 100 meters of water resistance. However, you do have very short lugs on this watch. If you actually measure it at the lugs, it's about 43 millimeters. Since you have male end links, it's about 47.7 millimeters, which is excellent considering that is including the bracelet. And then you have about a 5.3 millimeter crown. Now this does get a crown. The original did not have a crown because it was a tuning fork. So the crown would actually be on the back of the case. It would flip up and that's how you would actually tell the time. So since they use the Salita SW330 to get this to be a GMT, you do not have a crown on the back. It would be very difficult for them to do that. I think eventually they might come out with this in a quartz version when they do a standard version of this watch. However, I don't think we'll ever get a crown on the back of the case. They did tuck it into the side of the case itself, so you really can't see the crown when you're looking down at the watch. Very quickly, let me throw it on my wrist. You also get a boxed sapphire crystal, which is very vintage looking as well. Beautiful bullet bracelet. I think that's what they're actually calling it. Really nice bracelet. It sort of tapers up. Uh, it looks beautiful and it's also very tapered as well. So. Um, a very, very vintage style bracelet, very in keeping with the original astronaut. Uh, today I have a Grand Seiko on. It is my Grand Seiko chronograph. Uh, this is one of the first or very early chronographs before uh, they went over to just Grand Seiko. Uh, really, really cool watch. 
I haven't worn that in a little while. Here is the Astronaut on my seven and a half inch wrist. This looks awesome. It is sized for my seven and a half inch wrist. And I really do think this is a great looking watch. The price on this is $3,500. It is a limited edition of 300 pieces. I think that is on the more expensive side. However, uh, I hope that they come out with other versions. Usually what Bulova and Accutron do is they come out with a higher end version and then eventually come out with a standard version. I believe that's what they'll do here, at least I hope so. And hopefully it would be a quartz, so that means it would be more affordable. But I have no idea if they are actually doing that, I just think it would be cool. Anyway, very quickly, a loom shot, and then we'll wrap up the video. Loom is actually really cool on this watch. All of the hands are loomed. You have a lot of loom on the second hand, as you can see, the hands very liberally applied with loom. But the indices are really cool because you have dots for each one of the primary indices, and then you have those arrows or little triangles between each one of the primary indices. Very, very cool. I think they did a great job here. Obviously, it's fading pretty quickly. This is a sample. I'm not sure if the loom was improved, but it's really not bad on the hands. It's the indices that are fading pretty quickly, but it looks really good. Uh, with that staggering, it looks very interesting. Anyway, tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. Uh, I know this is a sample. Usually I would not make a video with a sample that does not have a working movement, but I decided to do this video because I think it's important that if you are interested in buying this watch, you could see what it looks like hands-on. And you know, there's a lot of stock images out there. However, this is uh, you know, a non-functioning model that is exactly the same as the working model, just not with a movement. Anyway, tell me what you think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. It helps me bring you videos like this. So if you could subscribe and hit that bell icon, I very much appreciate it. Anyway guys, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you in the next video.